The whole reason you're before me is due to your lack of structure. Moving forward on a creative process in a willy-nilly haphazard, fly by the seat of your creative pants, you are a design casualty waiting to happen. Do you need structure in your work files, designer? Sir, I do, sir. I'm glad you agree with me, designer. First part of solving your problem is admitting you have one. And a lack of structure is unacceptable. So I expect you to get your creative house in order, and I mean pronto. Sir, right away, sir. Welcome to Vector Basic Training. This is the layer structure video. On every work file that I begin a project with to build my vector graphics, I have a distinct way of layering my project right at the very beginning, and this just assists me as I proceed with any project. And if we look at the layers in this file, you can see that the bottom layer is the scan layer. This is where I take my refined sketch and I place it into my drawing program and then I um, in this case I set the transparency so it's about 20 percent just so it tints back and I can draw my vectors on top of it and it acts as the roadmap or the guide for me to build upon so I put that on the scan layer and I lock it so it can't uh, move around or accidentally shift over as I'm creating my artwork. And then the layer directly above that I called the build layer. Now this is the layer where I'll build um, the majority of my artwork. And for this specific design, which is a brand pattern I'm creating, um, I use the point by point method. And this is actually um, the same art that you'll see in that video um, later on the DVD. And I use that to create all my art on this layer. It's the build layer, hence the name. Um, now, the layer directly above that is what I call the temp layer. This is if I need to copy and paste something, but I don't want to have it in my way as I'm building at the moment, so I'll paste it into that layer. Or if I want to isolate certain content, in this case, um, the flowers. So I can turn off my build layer and just focus in on those flowers or whatever the content is within my design. It just gives me the ability to isolate it and um, get everything else out of the way so I can only focus on that specific item. So that's what I use the temporary layer for. Now um, as I proceed, as I build, I like to explore. I like to try other things. And on this specific project, these blossoms, I thought, well, maybe maybe I have too many flowers in here. Maybe I need to try something else. So what I did is I experimented, and I did one version where I got rid of these two blossoms, the one in the bottom right-hand corner and the one in the top middle, and I replaced them with just kind of swirly vines instead. And it's not that I didn't like it. I thought it looked okay, but... I still thought the blossom one looked better. And this is the storage layer. It's right above the temporary layer. And every file I create, I have a storage layer. And this usually contains my iterations of my building. So I'll get to certain stages and just as vector insurance, I guess you could call it, I'll copy and paste um, that vector art into the storage layer and I'll just literally use it as storage. I keep copies of all my vector shapes at whatever stages I feel is appropriate. So for example, on this project, if you look at this secondary option of this pattern, it's already fused together. I've already kind of welded all the independent dissected uh, vector shapes together using Pathfinder. So later on, if I want to go back and grab an element from here, it'd be a little difficult because it's all welded together. So what I do is I, let's just slide this one off, is I save aspects, we'll turn the, the scan off, I save, like I said, iterations of my art. So I can go back later and maybe I just isolate this little swirl here and I use it in some other design. So that's kind of what I use the storage layer for. It's literally just to store um, iterations of my vector building on any given project as I proceed and progress through the creative process. So it's um, a good way to basically archive 
your creativity as you build it, as you go along, and then in the future, you're able to go to the storage layer and harvest um, maybe it's unused concepts that didn't get approved by your client or to reuse a little element in one of your designs because it's appropriate for another design. So it's a, it's um, also what I consider a good creative habit, even though we don't mention this in the, the good creative habits um, chapter, it's still a good creative habit. And this is just the way I do it. This doesn't mean you have to do it this way. It's just um, a suggestion that I'm giving. So I have a scan layer, a build layer, a temporary layer, and then my storage layer. Now, the extra layer you'll see in here is just to show you what the end brand pattern ended up looking like. You'll actually see a different coloring in the other video on the DVD, and that was um, because it was just a little premature to what the client wanted. They wanted red, so this is what it ended up being. And that is layer structuring. I hope this helps you to um, set up your layers within your own build files so it will assist you in uh, creating outstanding vector graphics as you proceed forward. Thanks for watching.